So my question to you today is what do you Welcome to the Caribbean Edge. My name is Dawn Wilson. Happy Sunday. This is the Caribbean Edge Kids live with some amazing children. We welcome Asia and Ethan, who will be reading for you today. These young children are happy to read as they inspire motivate and educate us all. And we're going to have some fun too because we have Auntie Rebecca tuning in from Jamaica. <laughs> and we have our lovely Auntie Sophie as well, who is going to share with us a story. I have no idea what she's going to tell us today. So we're going to start out with meeting our children. Hi, Asia. How are you? Hi, I'm Tijan, and I'm doing good. Good. So welcome to the Caribbean Edge Kids. How old are you? I am nine years old and I'm going to be turning 10 next this year. Oh, so nine years old. And tell us which school you attend. I attend Bethlehem Junior Academy. Wow, that's a proud sponsor of TCE. So we're always happy to have kids from Bethlehem Junior Academy. And I already shared with you, we will be sending you one of our beautiful TCE masks as well. It was handmade by our friend, Wendy. So we love Wendy. And um, we'll be sending you one to Ethan. So tell us what you want to be when you grow up, Asia. I want to be a psychiatrist when I grow up. Beautiful. Or a doctor. Or a doctor. Okay, awesome. So, so proud of you. And you're going to an awesome school and you look beautiful. I love your flowers. Is that for the viewers? Yes, it is actually. They are pretty. <laughs> beautiful flowers with a beautiful young lady. And Ethan, let's talk to you a little bit. How old are you? 11. 11. And what do you want to be when you grow up? A track and field runner. Track and field runner. So do you have anyone that motivates and inspires you? Yes. Who is my that? My sister and my mom and my, summer and my dad. Oh, uh, how old is your sister? 16. 16. Oh, it must be nice to have a big sister. And mom and dad, thank you for motivating and inspiring Ethan as well. And what do you want? You, you want to be a track and field star. And I know you like computers, IT as well. Yeah, I do like computers too. So I may be working on a computer when I grow up. Very nice. And what school do you attend? Alcoba Elementary. In Georgia, correct? Yes. Well, welcome. So happy to have you. And Auntie Rebecca, welcome. First time on the Caribbean Edge Kids. <laughs> welcome, yes. welcome. Thank you for having me. It's nice to begin my weekend with these exciting, energetic, inspirational young people who like to read. Absolutely. So tell us about your work. My work. Thank you for not asking how old I am, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so I work with UNICEF. UNICEF is a United Nations agency, Asia and Ethan, and it's the children's arm of that big entity globally. And there are offices in over 170 countries around the world. Jamaica is one of them. So I'm in Kingston. Um, so we work on, we partner with government and non-governmental organizations, and we try to work on um, at levels of policy and practice to improve the lives of children. So it could be health, could be education, could be child protection. I work in the education sector. So I also lecture part-time at the University of the West Indies um, in their department of education. Beautiful. And thank you for your work. I know how much that takes of you, but it's also a self-rewarding job. So thank you, especially for doing it in Jamaica, our beloved country. 
Thank you. Well, it's we all work together and promoting literacy is a, is a very important thing. So I'm happy to, to be here with you today and share some books that I've written um, and encourage you all to write down your stories and your thoughts and, you know, self-publish, do whatever you want with them. Eventually, you never know, but you're touching other people with whatever it is that you write and share. Thank you. Absolutely. Auntie Sophie, happy Sunday. Thank you, Auntie Dawn. Happy Sunday to you all. I am looking forward to what the panelists have to share today, two lovely, uh, talented kids. And of course, Auntie Rebecca, I want to hear from you. So I'm excited. I'm happy to be here. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to the Caribbean Edge Kids, where we what? Educate, motivate, and inspire. <laughs> all right all right so asia tell us about your book and go ahead and read for us my book's name is sorry it the author is lukito noyongo and the it was illustrated by vashti harrison Solway was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba was the color of dust, and me, her sister, was the color of high moon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Solway even. People gave her sister meek pet names like sunshine, ray, and beauty. People gave Solway names like Blackie and Darty and Knight. Solway felt very hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Solway dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest erase that she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama. Solo decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, Rose, um, Solway rose to find not a trace of daylight in her skin. Solway told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Solway, she muttered. And what does it mean? Star Solway whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are as for beauty. Mama said, rubbing Solway's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful, Solway sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me, but you cannot rely on what what you look like to make you feel beautiful. My sweet, real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself and not how others see you. Now up you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said, come with me. Solway hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day. They were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. Lovely, nice, pretty. 
People gave Dave pet names like lovely, nice, pretty, scary, bad, ugly. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. They stayed behind and enjoyed making sure everybody, making everybody happy in the sun. But then they grew too long. They be began to really miss her sister and so did everybody else. There had to be a way to get her back. They set off to find Knight, and she did. I miss you, said Dave. I miss you too, said Knight. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, they replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors and some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that the night did not need to change, not even a little, not even at all? Now that night, and day were back together. A little bit of night returned to day in form of shadows and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. Together they make the world we know light and dark, strong and beautiful. Sole rose the next morning beaming. There would be there would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Solway felt beautiful inside and out. I am finished until dawn. Thank you. The end. Oh, that was a beautiful, that is a beautiful book read by a beautiful young lady, Asia. Oh my gosh. At some parts I felt sad and at other parts I felt so good with the advice and feedback. Tell us why you picked that book and what does it mean to you, Asia? I picked that book because I can relate to the same point when some people judge you by your color and they say you're not pretty, only we are pretty. And I'm, I understand that because I'm always beautiful. You are beautiful, you're phenomenal, you are amazing. And I'm so glad you picked that book because so many people need to hear that message. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Dawn. You're welcome. Auntie Rebecca, any words on that book? I think it's a very powerful story. I think Asia explained the, the main idea really well. And of course, it's written by a famous actress, um, a very talented young lady, Lupita Nyong'o. So it's inspirational. And, I, and I'm sure it has been uh, very well received. It looks also that it's beautifully illustrated. Um, I have I have heard of the book. I have not I had not had a chance to see the book before. Unfortunately, my children are now big um, teenagers, so I no longer have this joyful opportunity to go out and buy picture books, which was a favorite hobby of mine when they were younger, because we don't read them anymore in the house. But you know, eventually I'll have grandchildren, so I'll get to pick that back up many years from now. Many years. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years. <laughs> Thank you. And so, so right, Asia, by you picking that book, it just sends such a strong message. And it alerts us adults of all the different books out there and the messages that we want to um, others to receive from that book. So great choice today. Auntie Sophie. 
Yes, of course, you know, I'm, I'm always about the message in, in, the, in the stories and this resonates with me as well. And I really thank you so much for choosing this book, you young, brilliant, brilliant young lady. And thanks for um, bringing this to the fore. I did not know the actress Lupita wrote, wrote this. I, I'm going to now do some more research on this. And I hope to share this book with more of the kids in my circle because it is a powerful story. Being dark and, and having issues with feeling that you don't belong but this tells you that you belong. You have a place in this universe and you're just as beautiful as, the, as any other element of the universe. So we need you all. We need the sun. We need the rain. We need the darkness. And listen, I like midnight because I want to sleep. I love to sleep. <laughs> I love to rest. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Until dawn, I learn so much each and every Sunday I come on this program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, I want to add one thing, Auntie Dawn, is that, you know, the author, she could have stopped the story with the message between the mother and the child and the mother reassuring um, Solway, but she took it to another level and she arced the story and she took it into linking it to nature and an example that the children could resonate, that would resonate yes. with children, which yes. made it much more powerful and then added a more interesting element to it, a more believable element to it. So it was that's that was very cleverly done, and um, also in the very very um, aligned to the way that African folklore works. And you know, Lupita Nyong'o is from um, I can't remember which country in Africa she's from, but she's mm -hmm. African. So she perhaps has been influenced as a child by different folk tales and so on. And you can see that in that story. And AJ, I think you want to show us the book. Lupita Nyong is from Kenya, Africa. Beautiful. Oh, I have to get that one. I'm adding that to my collections. So thank you, Asia, so much for sharing that beautiful story. And you are so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Don. Thank you. You're Auntie welcome. Rebecca. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. You're welcome. Lord of mercy, the pity them cute. Jesus. <laughs> so that means the kids are cute. We love them. And she's just a phenomenal young girl. So we so appreciate you. Hi, Ethan. Patiently waiting. So what book do you have for us? And tell us about your story. The book I have is called Let's Go to the Zoo. Written by Lisa Park Crater. All right, take us to the zoo. My name is Rose. I'm a zookeeper. As a zookeeper, my job is to take care of the animals at my zoo. I keep the animals safe, healthy, well fed, and as happy as possible. I go to work early in the morning. I begin taking care of the animals before the zoo opens for the day. First, I check the animals and make sure they're healthy. I watch them to make sure their behavior hasn't changed. If an animal starts acting differently than usual, it's a must, it may be a sign that the animal is sick. Elephants have sensitive skin. I can check the elephants for cuts and scratches. I can check their feet for cracks or embedded rocks. At my zoo, animals live in habitats limited to their habitats. And in the wild, we don't want them to feel they are in cages. Lions, zebras, and giraffes need a wide open grassy spaces. Birds need trees and lots of room to fly. Tigers like to live in hunts by themselves. Gorillas and elephants and lions live in family groups. I prepare food for many of the animals. I feed each animal the kind of food it would eat in the wild. Lions, tigers eat meat. Rattlesnakes eat meat, too. But the meat is much smaller. 
Grizzly bears eat meat, but they also eat berries and nuts. Gorillas eat plants and berries. Koalas only eat one thing, eucalyptus leaves. Some animals like giraffes and elephants have both indoor and outdoor living areas. The indoor areas keep them safe at night or comfortable when it becomes cold or too hot. For them to go outside every day, I must clean their indoor and outdoor living areas. And make sure they are healthy places where the animals live. People visit our zoo, want to know about the animals and make sure the animal extincts have a lot of information for people to read. I make, I also put programs to show people how different animals eat, live, and behave. I train the animals to make sure the programs are safe for both the animals and the zoo vis visitors. I love the animals. I take care of them. But I try not to intrude upon their lives anymore than, than I have to. I try to leave them, leave the way where to live in the wild. It's also best for an animal to be raised by the mothers and fathers. They learn important things in that way. But sometimes I have to raise a baby that has been lost its mom or father. I like taking care of the animals. Many animal, animals, such as Asian wild horses, are endangered species. They're in danger of becoming extinct. extinct. Zoos help animals live long and happy lives. Land. Why, thank you, Ethan. I have not been to the zoo in years. <laughs> like Auntie Rebecca, my kids are grown, so <laughs> I have not taken them. So you took me back to the zoo and learning how important it is to clean their area, to feed them the right food, and which ones are about to be in, in, extinct. So that's very important. Zoo life. So tell us why you picked the book. Ethan? Yes. Why did oh. you pick the, this book? Because it was short to read and I love animals. <laughs> you love animals and it was short to read. Good, good answer. Do you have any pets of your own? No. No, not yet. From one day. One day, okay. <laughs> and Auntie Rebecca, what do you think of Ethan's book? Well, like you, it took me back to the zoo. I haven't been to the zoo in a long time. Um, I do want to tell Ethan, there's another really cool book, probably pitched at kids a little younger than you, that I used to read to my children when they were little, called Dare Zoo. So if any, any listeners out there have young kids who like animals like Ethan, Dare Zoo is a great board book. Um, maybe you know that book, Ethan. Um, I, I have three pets, Ethan. I have a dog who's a rescue dog that an awful human being threw into a gully and a friend rescued and my dog survived and she's a source of great joy to all of us and we have two cats. And everybody in my family is bigger than me than the two cats. Even the dog when she stands up on her two feet is about my height. So. Um, it's fun to live with animals. I hope you get to have a pet someday. Thank you. I am learning the same thing I've done without pets um, living in the US. Um, we're used to them in the homes in Jamaica. Um, but I recently got a cat um, because my kids wanted a cat. So I'm now a cat grandma, I guess. <laughs> And it's, it's quite different. Um, there goes the furniture. 
<laughs> but she's a joy and she throws herself on the floor and I get to like pet with pet her and um, she's mainly with my daughter, but it's nice having a pet. It's a nice change and I never thought I'd have them. So great, great reminiscence for us as, as we become pet lovers, no matter what stage in life. Auntie Sophie. <laughs> Yes, I love pets too. And of course, that story took me back to my little zoo in Jamaica. We used to go to somewhere called Hope Gardens and then there was a little zoo in the back and I would watch the monkeys and I'd see the animals and Not think, so oh my. Anymore. It's quite large now. They it's have large, but you know, in my head, this little... <laughs> no, it's very good. Small. I must visit that when I go back to Jamaica yes. Auntie Dawn. I need to go to Hope Gardens. I need to go to the zoo. I remember Funland. I'm not sure if they still have that part there. That part probably went. But I am telling you, I love when these stories take me back. So I appreciate that. And yes, I am a grand grand cat, grandma, grandma of cats. Yeah, I have a, I have a grand cat too. <laughs> Yes, I have a grand post. I have a grand post. <laughs> there we go, grand post Mars. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> We're going to twitch up with tongue today. Jesus yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ethan. And you're an amazing young man. We want to thank the viewers who are commenting about both our readers. Thank you for tuning in, viewers. And we're glad that you enjoy our readers as much as we do. So remember to share this as we go along here today. Auntie Rebecca, thank you so much again for joining us. What do you have for us today? Okay, so I'm going to share one of the books I've written, and it's also about animals, Ethan. It was inspired not by live animals, but by stuffed animals that were, and still are, in my children's bedrooms that we used to play with when they were little babies. So it's, it's a board book, and it's called A Pig in a Parachute. Um, so I'm the author, and my friend Michael Robinson is the illustrator. The book is available on Amazon and it's published by Blue Banyan Books, which is a Jamaican owned publishing company. And it has a children's section called uh, Peeny Wally Books, which is young for younger children, but it also has a lot of books for young adult readers and so on. So listeners, viewers could check out Blue Banyan Books or Amazon and you'd see some of these books. So I'm gonna read this. It may be a little young for you, Ethan and Asia, but just follow along with me because it has a, an important uh, literary device that it uses which you will see in poetry and in, in, in other parts of your life as you get older. So A Pig in a Parachute, it's a short story because it's a board book, so it's aimed at young children. Okay. There he is, way up high, a purple pig parachuting through the night sky. There she goes, coming from afar. Which way do I go? There we are. <laughs> coming from afar, a crimson crocodile careening in a car. So to careen is to lean left and right, okay? So she's careening. So if you have young listeners out there, young viewers, careen with me, move left and right. Now we have, first he goes left, then right. A lavender lion leaping with his eyes so bright. Oh my gosh, such a trip. It's a silver snake in a space ship. Next comes disaster moving faster and faster. It's a tangerine tiger twirling, twirling on a tractor. Wait, there's one more. A black bear banging on the downstairs door. Just then, my mom says, wake up, Ted, time to get out of that comfy bed. <sighs> Once again, it's time to start my day and I'm ready for any adventures that come my way. So that's the end of the story. Short story, board books are usually only eight, 16 pages long. Um, and the alliterative device, if you notice, did you hear anything, Asia or Ethan? I had a crimson crocodile. What else did we have in the story? We had a silver snake. Silver snake in a spaceship. We had... We had a... 
A lavender lion. Lavender lion and a pig in a parachute. And she's a purple pig, right? So we had a couple other animals. Do you remember any of the other animals, Ethan? Yes. There was a bear that was knocking on the door. A black bear. Mm -hmm. And there was, I think, one more. Well, there was the crimson crocodile. And then there was this one. The, this, the horrible tiger. The tangerine <laughs> tiger. And you notice the purple pig was parachuting. The tangerine tiger was twirling. The crimson crocodile was careening. The, the, the snake was in a spaceship. Um, the black bear was banging. So that device is called alliteration. It's when you use, you put words together that have the same first letter. So for example, Asia, you could be amazing Asia. And Ethan, you could be exciting Ethan. Auntie Dawn could be dynamic Dawn. And Auntie Sophie could be spectacular Sophie. And I could be remarkable Rebecca. So today, Try and come up with some, they're used, they're adjectives. They describe the noun or the person or the thing. So you can try and use that device today with your family. Come up with some nice alliteration for your mom, your dad, your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your animals, your pets, whatever. And I hope you enjoyed this story. This is one story I've written. There's others like this one, which is called Big and Strong, which you find this one is one of a series of books that's on the Jamaica Library Services website. So it's part of a, Ministry of Education project called Literacy 123. And on this site, um, which I guess we can put online later on somewhere for the, re for the viewers to access, you can access books that are for young children all the way to grade nine or 10 that are approved by the Ministry of Education. So they go from picture books to, to chapter books. And then I've also written this book, which is more for adults called Pieces of the Past. And it talks about people, places, events in Jamaican history. And it began as a series in the Gleaner. So if you want to Google it, you can just Google pieces of the past Jamaica Gleaner and the articles will come up. And if you want to buy it where they're all in one place and you can learn about the history of Devon House, about people like Mary Seacole, um, how different ethnic groups came to Jamaica and why, how coffee came here, what connection Jamaica has to chocolate, things like that are all in this book. That's one of my favorite things, the connection to chocolate. Um, and this book is also available on Amazon. So, Awesome. Thank you, Auntie Rebecca. Um, going back to your first book, I, I think it was written for my age group. <laughs> I must be a big kid because I so enjoyed the stories. Oh, my gosh. And what no, it, was a, it was a dream. It was like it, the little boy was having a dream, you know, and we used to play games, my children and I, when they would wake up, what did the animals do at night when they were sleeping and things like that. And so came the book. It took many years. I just want to say from the, my son is now 16. So you have an idea, you work at it, you, you rewrite it. You have to try and get the rhyming, right? People think it's easy to write books for children, particularly short books, but it's not because you have to convey a lot in a small amount of words. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, I'm going to teach you a trick. You see how this is Asia. When you look at your book, you'll see this too. And Ethan, when you're illustrating books for children. I'm not an illustrator, but I know this from having taught children's literature. A lot of times the illustrations are so placed to take your eyes through the, through the, through the whole double page spread. So you'll see the pig is here, which takes you to turn the page and the crocodile is pointing up and over. And so it takes your eye through the page to, to turn, to engross you in the story. So the, You'll see it if you go through the book in a little while, Asia, you'll see that I'm sure that illustrator used that technique. Oh, very nice. Very educational for all our young authors out there. Awesome tips. Thank you so much. And I also want to purchase all your books. I know about Blue Banyan as well because they actually send us some books for the Caribbean Edge kids as well. So a beautiful company. So check them out, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to share our knowledge and experience with you as well. So check out Re Auntie Rebecca's books and we will certainly post everything in the chat as well. Powerful beyond measure, each and every one of you. Thank you. Auntie Sophie. 
Yes, you see how I'm just sitting here engaged in this whole thing. I'm just loving it, loving it. Thank you so much for visiting with us, Auntie Rebecca. And of course, that was quite a delight. Thank you. Wonderful. So here we are, Auntie Dawn. You're going to be talking to the kids a little bit before Auntie Sophie reads. Absolutely. So we want to say, I want to make sure to share this, all right? Because the kids are going to chat some pato with us. They're going to speak pato to us. So Ethan and Asia says they are gained. So Ethan, where's your family from? Some, my dad is from Jamaica and my mom is from New York. Okay. And Asia? My, both my parents are from Jamaica. All right, so Asia, tell us something in Patwa. Go on your bed, picnic. <laughs> That's a popular one for us. Go on your bed, picnic. Ethan, have you heard that one? Not yet. So you learn something new when it's time for bed, and we say, Ethan, go to bed and you're stalling, you're like, oh, I'm not tired. Then mommy or daddy will say, go on your bed, Ethan, or picnic, go on your bed. Picnic meaning child, go to bed. So that's very popular for us in Jamaica and we love our language. Um, so we're happy that you're hearing it here on the Caribbean Edge Kids. And also if you have Jamaican parents that they're saying some of these uh, traditional words to you, but it, it's embedded in, in us anyway, because I use it on my children as well. And so Ethan, what, what words do you know? Well, I know some words, but I haven't, I don't know much, but I know one. Is it called? Pick me and pick foot. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, drive me crazy. Yes, so you must have been driving your parents crazy for them to use that one. They say, yeah, drive me crazy, boy. Right? Boy, you're driving me crazy. Go on to your bed. <laughs> so that means you're driving me crazy. Time to go to bed. Time to settle down. You have school tomorrow. Whatever it is, you drive your parents them crazy. So another way to say excellent is it sell off. So I want Asia to say it sell off. It sell off. Yeah, man, the party sell off. It's sell off. It's sell off. See it there? So you want to say the Caribbean Edge kids sell off with Ethan and Asia, meaning it was an excellent show. I, I see mommy saying something to Asia in the background too. All right. We also will say things turn up. Things turn up on the Caribbean Edge Kids with Asia and Ethan today, meaning it was excellent. Everything turn up. So say turn up. Turn up. Everything turn up. Everything turn up. So you just said, Mommy, Daddy, everything turn up today. Mommy, Daddy, everything turn up today. <laughs> Dad, everything turned up today. Yeah, man. <laughs> I love it. She really called mommy and daddy. You're so cute, Asia. Thank you. And Ethan, <laughs> everything turned up. We certainly appreciate that. Um, a popular one we say is Wagwan. So as you meet your friend, you say Wagwan. Or you can say Wagwan, mommy. Wagwan, daddy. So try that one. Wagwan. Wagwan, Wagwan, Auntie Rebecca. Wagwan, Auntie Rebecca. <laughs> and Asia, Wagwan, Auntie Sophie. Wagwan, Auntie Sophie. 
Yes, yeah, see that? Good job, kids. Thank you for learning a little bit about our language today. Y'all do a great job. Excellent job on a ton up. And Auntie Sophie, you got to take away. away. Go on through. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Auntie Dawn. Thanks, kids, for participating uh, in that little <laughs> chit chat there. So, all right. So what I'm going to do now, everybody, you, Auntie Rebecca, you see the wrap on my head. You know, I'm coming with something cultural, right? This is our bandana um, fabric here that we wear pretty much when we're going to do anything cultural, right? So here, everybody knows Auntie Sophie is from Jamaica. And my story today is an Anansi story, which is a Jamaican folk tale. And Anansi stories to my two new friends, Asia, yes, and of course, Ethan, my uh, friends, listen, Anansi stories are originated in West Africa. They were brought to Jamaica and other parts of the new world by Ashanti slaves. And they were handed down orally through generations. Now, Anansi, exist as a spider, a man, or a combination of the two. Now his name is sometimes spelled really interesting, A-N-A-N-C-Y, and his stories are called Anansi stories. So Anansi is no goody two shoes. No, he's no hero oftentimes. He is a greedy, lazy, inventive trickster, cunning and smart in the extreme. Now, Anansi loves a joke. And when he's not sleeping or eating, he's always up to something. So today, my new friends, I'm going to share with you a story about Anansi and a snake. So here we are going now to talk about some animals, right? Here we go. Tiger was the undisputed king of the forest. Tiger lilies were named after him. Tiger moths were named after him and the stories of the forest were called tiger stories. And Nancy was a nobody in the forest hierarchy. When the animals gathered together, they would ask idle questions like, who is the strongest animal? Or who is the bravest? All together they would chorus, tiger! Just to poke fun, they would say, who is the weakest? Like a church choir, they would all sing out, Anansi! Anansi got sick and tired of it all. One day he met Tiger face to face in the forest. Anansi bowed low to Tiger. But Tiger did not acknowledge Anansi in the least. He had no time to waste on such an insignificant speck. Tiger said Anansi, you have it all. Can't you just ease me up and let me have one thing named after me? Tiger wanted to ignore Anansi, but his curiosity got the better of him. And just what is it you want to bear your name, Anansi? The stories, replied Anansi. I want them to be called Anansi stories. Now, Tiger loved those stories and did not intend to give them up to this crawling nobody. Still, even the undisputed king of the forest needed a laugh sometimes. So he said to Anansi, if you can do one small thing for me, I will let you call the stories Anansi stories or any other name you like. Anansi didn't like the sound of this. What one thing would that be, Tiger? He asked cautiously. Nothing too hard, man. Just capture Snake for me. By the end of the week, and all the stories will be known as Anansi stories forevermore. Good thing Anansi had eight legs to stand on. <laughs> I am telling you, because at least four of them buckled same time. This snake was not your flimsy garden variety snake. Snake of the jungle was big, very big. And Anansi was small, very small. But Anansi could think big. So he said, I'll do it. At that, there was a huge burst of laughter from all the other animals 
who had been eavesdropping on the conversation. They went home, <laughs> tears of amusement rolling down their faces. And Nancy went home very worried, but thinking this was on Monday. The next day, and Nancy went on the trail he knew Snake traveled on every day. He made a large noose out of a strong vine and placed some of Snake's favorite berries inside it. He hid in the bushes, holding the other end of the vine. Snake came slithering along the path. He spied the berries and his mouth watered, but he also spied the noose. He lay his weight of his body on the vine. Then he reached in and ate the berries quickly. And Nancy tried and tried, but he could not pull the vine to close the noose. Snake's body was too heavy. Next day, Nancy went a little further down Snake's favorite trail and dug a pit in the ground. He placed a luscious hand of ripe bananas in it then smeared the sides of the pit with grease so that Snake would slip in when he tried to get the bananas. Snake came along the path. He spied the bananas and his mouth watered, but he also spied the grease. So he wrapped his tail around a thick tree trunk, then reached into the hole with his head and ate the bananas. If he had lips, he would have licked them. He raised his head out of the pit, unwrapped his tail, and slithered away. Next day, Anansi made a square trap of sticks with spaces on three sides and a door on the other. He put some mangoes inside. Soon a piglet came along and went straight for the mangoes. He didn't notice when Anansi shut the door behind him. Anansi figured that snake could get inside the trap through the spaces, but that he would be too fat to get out after he had eaten the piglet. Snake came along and saw the piglet. The creature was so terrified when he saw snake that he went berserk, squealing at the top of his lungs and smashing the trap in pieces. The piglet fled into the bushes and snake's mouth did not even get the chance to water. And Nancy muttered to himself, for fool, good for nothing, pig. The next day, it was Friday, the end of the week, and Nancy was still snakeless. He went directly to Snake's house and sat outside, looking dejected. Snake came out and looked at Nancy in surprise. But you're bright, eh? All week long, you're trying to catch me. I know you're sitting here beer fierce in a yard. And Nancy looked at Snake and sighed. Yes, it's true. But I was trying to catch you for a worthy cause. Now the other animals will continue to talk behind your back. What you talking about, Anansi? What they saying about me? Anansi said, well, I really shouldn't be telling you but they're saying that you believe you are the longest thing around and that you think you're God's gift to longness when even the shortest bamboo around here is longer than you. Snake was outraged. Measure me, Anansi! Measure me! Cut down the longest bamboo you can find and let me shut up those backbiters. Anansi ran and cut down the longest bamboo. He rested it on the ground and snakes stretched out beside it. Call them Anansi. Let them see that nothing around here can test me. Anansi scratched his chin. Well, snake, there's a problem. You look longer than the bamboo, but how do I know that when I go up to your head, you're not crawling up to look longer, and when I go down to your tail, you're not shifting down on that end? Tie me. Tie me tail then, Anansi, if you don't believe me. By this time, curious animals were gathering around to watch. Anansi tied Snake's tail tightly to the bamboo with some vines. Then he said to Snake, stretch, Snake, stretch. You're almost there. Stretch till your eyes shut and you can't stretch no more. Anansi had never seen a snake sweat. 
Snake stretched till his eyes were squeezed shut. And in a flash, Anansi tied his head to the pole. Then his middle. The animals who had been watching were silent. There was no laughing. There was no laughing at Anansi this time. He had said he would capture Snake. And he did. And from that day to this day, the stories have been called Anansi stories. Jack Mandora, me not choose none. The <laughs> end. <laughs> Anansi outsmarted them. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. So that's such a cultural story for us, the Anansi story. And Auntie Sophie just pulls me in every week. Thank you so much for sharing that with our viewers and the world as we share our culture and heritage with you. So for our young kids on the show who actually have Caribbean background as well, you know, your parents can help, you know, go ask them about this story, the Anansi stories, and some of the words that Auntie Sophie mentioned, because I'm sure you probably don't understand all of them, which is awesome because then you get to go figure out what they all mean. So I know you said, uh, but you're bright up my fears. And in a me yard, and I'm like, do these kids understand what is being said? So we challenge you to go figure it out and ask your Caribbean friends if you don't have Caribbean parents as well. But thank you, Auntie Sophie, for sharing the Anansi story with us. <laughs> Auntie Rebecca, have you heard Anansi story in a while? <laughs> uh, no, not in a while, but I actually, interestingly, did when I was doing my first degree as an undergraduate, my, my thesis was looking at an Anansi tale and how it had evolved from West Africa in Jamaica over a period of time and why sociologically it had been adapted and the meaning of that particular tale, which was collected. There's a fantastic collection of Jamaican folk tales called Jamaican Folk Tales and Oral Histories by Laura Tano, Dr. Laura Tano, also available, I think on Amazon by now. And Laura went out and thank goodness she did. And she collected storytellers telling the stories, filmed them at the time, which now has all been digitized. It was on a, an old video cassette. You children wouldn't know what a video cassette is, but now it's been updated. Um, and Laura did fantastic, eth fantastic ethnographic research. And if she hadn't done that, we would have lost those tales. She collected them. She noted the musical, uh, the musical refrains of the repeated chorus in the story. Many stories have repeated refrains that move it along when you hear it live. Um, so that's a fantastic resource. And so I do know a fair bit about, about Anansi tales and the role that Anansi played psychologically um, for our African ancestors during slavery and even after slavery. Thank you. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so we learned so much on this show, Auntie Sophie. <laughs> and we need to uh, tell Auntie Rebecca that we have a guest, Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks, who is a storyteller in Jamaica. She has visited with us here and has shared some of our folk tales from Jamaica. So we thank her too and thank her for keeping the intangible heritage uh, alive in Jamaica as well. But I will be researching yeah. law. I mean, a friend and, and colleague, and she actually has a podcast now available on the Gleaner. If you're a Gleaner premium subscriber, I think they call it, you can hear it. You can hear Amina's uh, work. She's a, a storytelling champion. Um, <laughs> I, I, I also have a podcast on the Gleaner series too, It's but it's only available on this premium subscription, but it soon will go um, broader than that, I think. And it's excerpts from my Pieces of the Past book. Wonderful. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Awesome that too yeah yes. thank you and dr amina blackwood meeks is a beloved the caribbean edge kids we've had her actually on both shows and she shares so much with us and she continues to educate and inspire us as, as well if she's not somewhere else she's probably tuned into this episode but we can't thank her enough she's actually been with the kids about five times on the show as well as our christmas show and we always welcome her back, as well as our great authors um, like yourself, Auntie Rebecca, for sharing so much with us today. Asia and Ethan, anything you want to say to your viewers today? I, I 
thank you so much for listening in on my story. Thank you for having me on this show, Auntie Don and Auntie Sophie and Auntie Rebecca. I thank you guys so much. You're beautiful and we loved your book as well. Thank you. Keep inspiring and motivating us all. Ethan? I like this show for many reasons. I read Nancy's books, but I haven't read the complete series. But I'm happy I got to learn another book. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for being brilliant. We certainly wish you all the best in track and field and computers. And don't be a stranger to the Caribbean Edge Kids. We thank you for inspiring others today. We thank all the viewers for tuning in and for all your comments. They're laughing, they're having fun, and they're saying it's a great show. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Caribbean Edge Kids. Have an amazing, amazing Phenomenal week. One love. Go on on a bed. <laughs> I walk good. Walk good. Walk good. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye, Asia. Bye, Ethan. Bye. Thanks, Bye.